right of yourself, nafs. Against you is that you employ it in obeying God. Then you deliver to your tongue its right, to your hearing its right, to your sight its right, to your hand its right, to your leg its right, to your stomach its right, to your private part its right, and you seek help from God in all that. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Welcome to Live in London. On Monday we were discussing the great works of Imam al-Sajjad known as Risalat al-Haquq. We discussed the first right, which was the right of God, that he should be obeyed and that he, no partner should be associated with him. Risalat al-Haquq is a great book one can benefit from, Muslim and non-Muslim alike. But let us move the discussion now on to the second right, which is Haqq al-Nafs. The right of the self or the right of the human soul. We know about the struggles of the human self and we know about the difficulties one faces and the challenges one faces with itself. We hear about jihad al-nafs in the lectures. But how does one actualize at the real potential of the self? And how has the Quran and the Ahlul Bayt discussed the, the, um, the difficulties and all the challenges one faces with the self? Joining me with this discussion and joining with me every discussion is Dr. Sayyid Aman Akshwani. Sayyid, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah wa Barakatuh. Wa Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. How are you this evening? Fantastic, very well. MashaAllah. Doctor, coming in with the first question. Man arfa nafsa faqad arfa rabba. This attributes to the Prophet. Um, I mean, what, does, what do these words actually mean? Could you explain this, this ayah? Yes, this uh, hadith attributed to the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his family. And sometimes we hear it attributed to Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Yes, uh, he who knows himself knows his Lord. And mm -hmm. really that's seen as being uh, the very motto by which every Muslim has to live by as well as constantly reflect upon. We find that many of us are very concerned about our physical health. Maybe not so concerned about our spiritual health. Naturally, all of us want to achieve a balance between the physical and the spiritual. And if Islam claims to be a religion of God, a holistic way of life, Indeed. then it should be able to cater for our physical as well as our spiritual needs. Ascent. In the same way we have a body to look after, yes. we also recognize that there are certain things that cannot be quantified or cannot be explained in physical or material terms. Okay. I don't say, for example, that your knowledge is 61.6% and my knowledge is 58.7%. We don't put knowledge in material mm -hmm. terms, for example. We recognize that knowledge may be something which is imprinted into our soul, not imprinted onto our body. And so when we begin to reflect upon the human being as per the philosophy of Islam, the human being is one who is made up of different terms we see within the holy quran it's not just the jism mm -hmm. that is normally thought of the body the physical body rather you hear of the ruh you hear of the nafs okay you hear of the qalb you hear of the aql and when you hear of all of these you see that islam seeks to actualize the growth and potential of the human being mm -hmm. by providing them with direction in their spiritual and their physical life so in my physical life, for example, I'm taught as a Muslim that the holy month of Ramadan should be a month in which I fast. I look yes. after my physical health. Yes. I'm taught, for example, that there are certain foods which I'm allowed to eat, certain foods which I'm not allowed to eat okay. to look after my physical health. I'm taught, for example, that don't make your stomach a graveyard for animals. Okay. There should be times where a person doesn't just consume animal, animal, animal every day, but also thinks of vegetarian life or, for example, staying away from Meat. meat products understood now all of these provide for our physical well-being when you have a hadith man arafa nafsa faqad arafa rabba here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying whoever knows their self yes knows their lord Ascent. allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the holy prophet peace be upon his family is not saying whoever knows their body knows their lord the mm -hmm. body has its own discussion yes here this is more focusing on the spiritual aspect why because as human beings, we have physical diseases mm -hmm. and spiritual diseases. And we can be in a state of physical well-being okay. and a state of spiritual well-being. So, Ascent. if I have a physical disease or yes. a virus, where would I go to get it cured? 
doctor doctor hospital hospital pharmacy pharmacist yes. this is for my physical health there are certain diseases which are nothing to do with your physical health okay backbiting okay you go to the pharmacist for example and say listen <laughs> uh, is there any tablets for backbiting i seem to be one who backbites a lot but in front of the person I've backbitten, I smile. Mm -hmm. Or I don't have the guts to say what I backbit them about. Yeah. So I've got this disease that's affected me spiritually. Do you mind giving me some paracetamol? What would he do? He'd look at you and think, is this guy okay or no? <laughs> gossip, for example. Is that Indeed. a physical disease? Do you say, for example, I feel gossip on my right elbow? <laughs> no. <laughs> gossip is a spiritual disease. Yes. Envy. There are those no. who are envious of your wealth, envious of your good looks, Yours. envious of, for <laughs> example, one's success in life, one's fame. Mm -hmm. There are people out there who are very envious of these things. Now, if I feel that envy has begun to affect me, do I go to a pharmacist? No. I begin to no. ask myself, how do I cure these sicknesses that I have? Sense. Such as envy, such as hypocrisy, yes. such as lust, such as arrogance, such as backbiting. Mm -hmm. How do I cure these? When the Prophet, peace be upon him, his family says, Man arafa nafsa, he who knows him, himself Self. knows his, his Lord. Lord. It means the moment you come into tune with understanding your nafs is your personality what some may call your identity, what others okay. may call the ego. Uh -huh. Different. It depends who's the one defining it. Mm -hmm. Only then will you be able to understand how to get closer to God. Why? Because if I've got a list of diseases such as envy, mm -hmm. hypocrisy, yes. lust, gluttony, arrogance, if I've got these diseases, if I recognize I have them and I'm yes. looking for a way in which I am able to cure them, then I'm giving the nafs its haq. Okay. Because what did we say? The yes. right of the nafs is? The right of the, your, your self nafs against you is that you employ it in obeying God. The right of your nafs against you is that you employ it in obeying, obeying God. God. Yes. God, didn't, God wasn't too concerned with the right of your body against you is that you employ in obeying God. No, yeah. our body, we have to look after it. Mm -hmm. Our body, we have to purify it. But likewise... Mm -hmm. What's going to be more everlasting? Our mm. body, the jism, or the nafs? That's yeah. What's going to be the one that's more everlasting? The jism, mm. eventually, how many years will you live on this earth? If you're lucky and you're proud of yourself, you live 90 years. Yeah. If you're lucky, you live 70 years. However, with your nafs that has a bearing, not just on this world, my nafs will have a bearing on my grave, has a bearing on the intermediary world known as yes. the Barzakh. My nafs has a bearing on the hereafter. Okay. So therefore, the hadith of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon his family, who, who, he who knows themselves, knows their Lord. It means that if you truly reflect upon your nafs at this moment in wherever you're sitting in the world and ask yourself, what diseases do I have? How do I cure them? What are the steps to cure them? Mm -hmm. what am, what's my relationship? What's my identity? What is my personality? Mm -hmm. Whenever you hear anything about the word nafs, it's always relating to identity and personality. That makes sense. Yeah. So, I mean, when in discussions, we always hear about the jihad of the self or the jihad of the nafs. I mean, are they the same thing or is one greater than the other? Could you elaborate? Well, the word jihad means struggle. Mm -hmm. Sadly, many times in the media, when you hear the word jihad, the connotations are always extremely negative. Indeed. Because it's always seen as the jihad of this terrorist group or that mm. fundamentalist group and and so the image is always seen as an extremely negative image yes but the word jihad in its origin you see the word juhud it's a struggle undertaken by someone Imam Sadiq السلام, in the Bihar there's a tradition where he talks about how the Holy Prophet peace be upon his family and the companions mm -hmm. had gone on an expedition on their way back, the Holy Prophet makes an interesting remark. Blessed are those who have gone on the minor jihad. 
yes. and are about to undertake the major, major jihad. jihad. Now hold on. Mm. You think to yourself that the major jihad would be the jihad of Physical the war, war, the battlefield. Yeah, I, yeah. I would assume that as well. One would assume that the major jihad would be the jihad of the war. Physical battlefield. Jihad. When you go to Badr or Uhud or Khandaq Indeed. or Khaybar, you'd assume that that is the major jihad. The Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family, wanted to highlight the greatest struggle any human being faces is the struggle with the self. That's right. Because you're constantly struggling with this personality. One minute religious, next minute you've got the desires that the world's mm -hmm. giving you. Next minute you want to feel God's divine breath again. Next minute you're seeing the pleasures out there. If you notice us as human beings, we love being around those who give us wisdom and Indeed. lectures Indeed. and Quranic verses. Yes. But then any temptation elsewhere, we don't mind we, enjoying that as well. Mm -hmm. So you're constantly in this battle. That's, That's right. a major jihad. How okay. many times when someone tells you, bro, I'm finding it hard to stop this sin. It's a major jihad for me. Mm -hmm. There are people out there, All for the example, time. who know masturbation in Islam is mm -hmm. haram. 100%. It's forbidden. Maybe in other walks of life, maybe in other beliefs, people say masturbation is something which, you know, there should be nothing wrong with. It's not immoral. In okay. Islam, for example, masturbation is seen as a, as a sin. There are people out there who pray. They love to be in the mosque. Mm -hmm. They love to fast in Ramadan. Yes. They love to, for example, sit in lectures. They love to hear wisdom. But their major jihad is to stop mm -hmm. and act like this. Mm -hmm. If you told those same guys, are you ready to defend Islam tomorrow? Yes. Many of them will be pumped up. Bring it on. Where are they? <laughs> True? Indeed. Many of them will say that, you know what? You bring it on right now. I'm ready to fight anyone who attacks mm -hmm. the religion. Tell them when you're alone and no one's watching you mm -hmm. and your nafs is saying to you, but listen, no one's watching. Your parents aren't there. Community's not around. Mm -hmm. Why don't you enjoy the sin? That's a major jihad to stop that. But it's a jihad. Why is it called a jihad? Why yes. did the Prophet Muhammad said, you know what? Those guys have gone on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. May God bless them. May God reward yes. them. But you know what? The major jihad is when they return from the battlefield and they go back home. Because sometimes when you're around good company, you can stay away from haram. Mm -hmm. It's when idle thumbs make the devil's work. Ascent. When you're alone and you start having these thoughts and now you've got that clash in that nafs, that mm -hmm. identity that you're building. You hear voices telling you don't. You mm -hmm. hear voices telling you just enjoy it for now and repent later. You hear voices telling you go to Hajj in a few years. God forgives everything. Mm -hmm. You hear voices justifying your sins. That you know what? Do this sin, but make sure next Muharram you're at the mosque for 10 nights, God will forgive you. You have voices that tell you next Ramadan and Laylatul Qadr, God mm -hmm. forgives all your sins, so do them. You got voices that tell you and Ziyara this year, so you've got enough thawab. Mm -hmm. So even if you do a couple of sins, you've already accumulated a lot of thawab. That's a major jihad. When I receive emails from people, I always find that their major jihads in life are things which some people would see as minor. Mm -hmm. yeah, I see some will say to you, listen, I can't stop listening to hip hop and R&B. That, that music that's out there, there's some music out there which isn't bad, but there's some music out there with cursing and Indeed. immoral profanity. language, profanity. Some will say to you, I can't stop. I can't. They'll, they'll, they'll write you an email Mm -hmm. Or they'll meet you after a lecture and they'll say to you, they'll say, you know what? My major jihad is to stop listening to music. Look at the, the way they describe it. My major jihad. Mm -hmm. You'd think that the major jihad for someone in life would be, are you ready to go and pick up a yeah, weapon, weapon and defend yourself? Yes. Are you ready to leave this dunya and the shackles of this dunya? Mm -hmm. No, no. My major jihad is that I can't get into my car unless I play music. I can't do my wedding unless I'm bashing music everywhere. I can't do... That's a, that for some is a major jihad. Yeah. So, 
when we're looking at what's a minor jihad, the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family, did not view Badr, Uhud, Khandaq, and Khaybar as major. He's like, these are minor. God rewards the shuhada in them. But the real test for you guys is when you're going to go back into the jungle of Medina society again, will you still backbite each other? Will any of you think of committing zina? Will any of you be religious in public and against Allah? So the major jihad in Islam is the jihad of the nafs. Ascent. 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 Just a quick note to all the viewers is that we do have live call-ins and if you have a question that you'd like to direct to the Sayyid, please call us on 0203 515 0199 or alternatively you can WhatsApp us and we'll try and get your questions through to the Sayyid. Sayyidna, if you were to tell me about, if you were to ask me about the nafs, what is the nafs? I would think it's the soul or uh, the spirit of, of an individual, but we have an Arabic word for that which is ruh. So the nafs and the ruh, are, are they the same thing or is there a difference between these two? I don't think I've seen two words which scholars have sought to identify the definition of like these two. Mm -hmm. You ask the mystic, he gives you an answer. You ask the jurist, he gives you an answer. You ask the theologian, he gives you an answer. You ask the philosopher, he gives you an answer. Who should we ask? Well, I think we go back to the Imams of Ahlul Bayt and even then, you're seeing interchangeable Mashallah. language. And sometimes you wonder, does it depend on who they were speaking to? Mm -hmm. You know, a sign of wisdom is you speak to people on the level of their intellect. Indeed. And I do sometimes think that with the Imams of Ahlul Bayt sometimes it depends. Is it Abu Basir? Is it Mu'min al taq he's talking to? Is it Mufaddal? Is it Zurara? Mm -hmm. Is it Hisham ibn al-Hakam? Is it Muhammad bin Muslim? Is it, you know, Muhammad bin Abi Umar or Ayyub bin Nuh? It depends on <coughs> who they're talking to. But then you're looking at all these different, even Saduq in, 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 in his discussions within the Shi'i creed mm -hmm. is providing you with an answer of the ruh and the nafs and still you're seeing an interchangeable definition. And dare I say that if ruh is spirit and nafs is soul, Okay. Dare I say there is a moment of union that can also occur when you look at ayahs such as Ya ayatuhan nafsul mutma'inna irja'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiya. I wonder if mardiya and that nafsul mutma'inna is that moment the ruh and the nafs are in unison with one another, okay. the highest level attainable. If I were to say that the nafs is the identity, the personality, okay. the ruh is that divine breath. Uh -huh. The ruh is the reality. Mm -hmm. And the nafs either <coughs> brings the ruh into good light or into dark light. And what I mean by that is that the way you purify that nafs mm -hmm. either gets you closer to the origin of that divine breath. Okay. Or further away from mm -hmm. that divine breath because you're looking at the ruh as the reality the eternal the divine breath yes breathing of the ruh into the creation okay you know the body is nothing without the ruh it's just a piece of clay the ruh is the divine breath mm -hmm. gives the body that life yes what identity that body takes on <coughs> that person, persona, that identity that you take on in your life may be seen as the nafs. So you're okay. looking at ruh as divine breath, yes. nafs as the personality. Okay. And the body is the vehicle. Mm -hmm. You know, so for example, I'm nothing, just a piece of clay. Allah breathed his spirit mm -hmm. into me. I now live in a world where I see temptation, I see divine attributes, mm -hmm. I see sin, I see godly attributes. I see that which calls me to oppressing myself, I see that which calls me to allowing myself to grow. <coughs> now I have to ask myself, what do I do with the voice that's speaking to me known as the conscience? Okay. 
the intellect that God's given me, mm -hmm. that therefore decides where my nafs gets in closeness to that original divine breath. Okay. What we certainly know is that the body is the most limited of these, mm -hmm. the most basic. Yes. Body dies and decays. Indeed. True. Imam al Hussein says before he dies in Karbala, alayhi salam, if bodies are meant to die and decay, then let my body be cut into a thousand pieces. Mm -hmm. What remains, the eternal, mm -hmm. is the ruh. And the nafs is what you built in this world and your character is what's going to prove to be important as you go from stage to stage in your evolution as a human being. You can't really offer more on the ruh. Mm -hmm. Because even when they asked the Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, about the ruh, mm -hmm. you know, the knowledge of it is with his Lord. Only a small portion is given in explaining the ruh. Okay. We see instances in the Quran where the ruh, a creation of the Lord, the divine breath of the Lord is mentioned. Mm -hmm. But the nafs is certainly mentioned on more occasions. Yeah. Awesome. So the nafs itself, could we say that the nafs has its own or shares a conscience with, this, with, with an individual that has its own likes and dislikes and things like that? Yes, I, th I think, you know, the nafs looks around at this world and in tandem with the vehicle that is the body mm -hmm. is now making a decision what it wants okay does it want the pleasures of this world and not to really care about anything for the hereafter mm -hmm. and that's where religion plays a major role because religion cannot just be a set of legal ordinances mm -hmm. there also has to be a spiritual aspect to the religion that highlights how best to cultivate mm -hmm. your personality. Awesome. Um, but the nafs certainly, you know, if you're looking at the different definitions and the different gradations of the self in the Quran, there certainly seems mm -hmm. to be different stages which are the nafs of the human being can go through from godly to virtually lower than animal. Wow. I'm not surprised when I read, for example, the tradition that if the human being ensures their intellect mm -hmm. overcomes all their desires, they can be wow. higher than angels, but their desires overcome their intellect, they can be lower than animals. animals yes. You know, so the human being can serve because the human being has intellect and emotion. Uh -huh. so angels, for example, intellect, no emotion. Animals, emotion, no intellect. No intellect so, certainly, if you look in the Quran, the Quran is showing you different stages of the nafs. Okay. Yeah. So, like, like, like you explained very well about the nafs, and that, yeah, it does have its own uh, desires and things like that. I mean, if one thinks about himself, that, okay, if then my nafs is like my identity, yes. is who I am. But right about now, I'm in this stage of my life. I mean, maybe I'm not fully practicing or uh, I'm not, you know, um, obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way I should be. What does that say about someone's nafs? Uh, the and, fact and, that and you're the... talking about it mm -hmm. is good. Mm -hmm. I always find a lot of people say to me, you know, I, I don't feel as spiritual as I should. Or for example, I, I want to get closer to God, but I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And that's a, that's a good level to be on because, believe you me, some people will think that it's really a low level if a person asks these things or talks about these things, mm -hmm. but shows your conscience is alive. The worst level to be on is a level where you're like, I'm going to do haram, so what? Mm -hmm. That is the lowest level when a human being is like, mm -hmm. I'm going to sin, I don't care anymore. I don't mm -hmm. care. Put me in hell. That's the most lowest as well as the most sinful thing you can ever say. Because it's a mixture of an, a personality that 
is extremely low, mm-hmm. has not chased the godly ideals, mm-hmm. and also a mixture of despairing of God's mercy. Wow. The fact that you can still say, you know what, I want to be more religious. I want to get closer to God. You may, you may have, for example, certain people watching this show. Mm-hmm. And they may be thinking to themselves, you know what? I'm doing some of my obligatory duties, but some of them I'm not. But I'm, I'm actually thinking of when will I change this? How, when will I do this? That's a good level. Mm-hmm. It's referred to, according to the scholars, they say, in Nafs al Okay. Nafs al is mentioned in the Quran in chapter 75, verse 2. two. Uh-huh. In chapter 75, verse 2 of the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by this reproaching self. This self that is constantly reflecting. Mm-hmm. The guilt is there, but there's a conscience that's alive. Mm-hmm. You know, around us in the world today, there are many dead men walking. Okay. You see bodies, there's no reflection there. Mm. There's no contemplation. There's no thought process. In the Quran, God wants you to go to the deepest levels of thought. When you see qalb, you see tafakkur, you see ta'aqqul, tadabbur, albab. There's these different levels and depths of understanding and intellectual reflection and thought that God wants the human being to become. Mm -hmm. We're human beings, not human doings. God wants us to be. Mm -hmm. Doesn't want us to just do, do, do. He wants us to grow. Otherwise, honestly, an animal eats, I eat. An animal sleeps, I sleep. An animal has sex and the human being has sexual relations. All of these, the animals share. Mm -hmm. The difference of the human being there are certain traits that upon reflection, Ascent. patience, perseverance, mm-hmm. dignity, humility, yes. altruism, compassion, generosity. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to deny that other creations of God may have it to a certain level, but the human can perfect it to the highest level. Yes. Lawama, if you're at that level where you're like, you know what, why don't you go to sleep in the night? Mm-hmm. You think to yourself, you know what, what am I doing in my life? Where am I heading? Mm. The contemplation. That's a good level for your personality to be at. Okay. You know, if you're at that level where you're thinking, maybe from tomorrow I'm going to start changing. I'm going to get closer to Ahlul Bayt, get closer to the Quran. Mm -hmm. I'm going to serve more in my local community. I'm going to serve the Muslims and non-Muslim community at large. I'm going to reflect on the traditions of Ahlul Bayt. I'm going to maybe pick up Nahj mm-hmm. al-Balagh or Sahifa Sajjadiyah alongside the Quran and start reading them all Rasalat al oh, okay. That level of the nafs is good. Because that level of the nafs is a nafs where the conscience is alive. And I always say, wherever I lecture, mm-hmm. there is no voice in this earth, in our lifetime, as loud as our conscience. Oh, what you shouldn't do is keep shutting that voice down mm-hmm. because that's when that personality that you're cultivating your nafs slowly you'll see it when you're shutting that voice down that the voice telling you listen don't do that haram don't mm-hmm. do it and you shut it down yeah you could fall into the trap of a second type of nafs mentioned in the quran okay nafs al amara okay this is chapter 12, isn't it? This is with uh, Zulaikha. Yes, she chapter 12, it. verse 53 of the yeah. Quran. When Zulaikha, mm-hmm. the whole of Egypt knows she chased Yusuf now. Mm-hmm. And she says an interesting line, وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُّوءٍ إِلَّا مَا رَحِمَ رَبِّي I'm not going to make excuses for my nafs. Mm-hmm. Come on, my nafs wants to engage in sin mm-hmm. Except for the mercy of my Lord Were it not for God's mercy God's guidance mm-hmm. Many of us would be engaging in sin She looks at the woman of Egypt Who have blamed her saying That we've heard that you're the one who Chased Yusuf after apparently in the beginning the accusation yes, was Yusuf, Yusuf was chasing was, yes. her, was in prison. 
And she mentions here وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِ إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَ Now here sometimes mention نفس الأمارة We mention the first نفس is called what? نفس اللوامة The second نفس is نفس الأمارة That نفس is now a نفس where you commit a haram act but you don't care anymore. Okay. Now, people have done this in different ways throughout history. There was always a group of Muslims who used to say, well, God knows everything I was going to do, so I'm going to do haram anyway because God knew. <laughs> so that was one way of justifying their sins. And then you have others, for example, who will turn around and they will actually make a reasoning in their head that I'll do all this haram now because I'm young. Mm -hmm. But when I grow older, I <coughs> become religious. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest arrogance you can have. Imam Zain al-Abidin used to say, alayhi salam, don't look at the size of the sin. Look at who you mm -hmm. were disobeying. Some of us are looking at a sin and saying, well, this one's a smaller sin, that one's a smaller sin, this one's this. Don't look at the size of the sin. Look at who? You're disobeying. disobeying. So what you have is, Nafs al-Ammara is a level you don't want to be at, bro. Okay. You don't want to be at a level where I'm going to do a haram act. Like, for example, let's say you're at a, a gathering mm -hmm. and something haram is being done and you've reached a level where you just don't care anymore. You're like, I don't care what people think. Now, some will come out with the classic line, only God can judge me. <laughs> But that's just an excuse, that line. You know, they say, you can't judge me. God can... No, no, but I can certainly enjoy the good and forbid the evil because Amr al Ma'roof and Nayyah al-Munkar is my duty. Indeed. In the right way, in the right time. Now, if your nafs is still talking to you at that moment, saying, you know, you shouldn't be here. That's good. Don't use that as an excuse to say, well, mm. the fact that I'm thinking I shouldn't be here means I'm on a good level. No. Because the moment you start thinking... I shouldn't be here, that shows you're still ticking. Mm -hmm. You've still got some sort of relationship to the divine breath. Mm -hmm. But be careful that you don't reach a level where when your friends tell you, let's do this thing, and you're like, yeah, so what? I'm going to do it. I don't care what people think. Because that's when you're at Ammara. Mm -hmm. And if you're at Nafs al Ammara, that's when the pharmacist tells you, go to emergency room in the hospital, oh, ER, wow. A&E, okay. ASAP. Wow. I, think I just, I just like said three words without saying them. Uh -huh. Go straight away to the emergency room. Go to, but you're going to be saying, hold on, say, no, which emergency room? Exactly. You're telling me that because I'm doing something haram, I've got to go to the <coughs> emergency room. Go look for the remedy. Mm -hmm. When I'm in Nafs al-Ammara, when I don't care anymore about the haram that I do, that's when you've got to begin to reflect that where am I heading in my life? And you have to seek, in the same way you seek the consultant, specialist, psychiatrist, mm. who's going to give you an answer about your physical health. Maybe there are times when you need to seek this consultant, spiritual doctor who can help you. So say that, which one comes first? Nafs al-Amara or Nafs al -Luwama? As in, is someone going to not uh, care about their sin and then reflect or does someone you know is reflecting and maybe you can't find an answer and this has total disregard for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all of us are born the fitrah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all of us are born with the ability to reflect the ability mm -hmm. to contemplate the ability to think Excellent. okay I may say and the tradition mentions that the parents for example may lead you towards a particular religion at the beginning that should never stop you from reflecting on what you want your choice to be of which ideology is going to cultivate the growth of yourself. Sense. At the beginning, every human being's conscience is a loud voice. At the beginning, it's a pure voice. We call it a ma'asum voice. You're yes, still indeed. young. Yes. But there are factors that influence whether you head towards the direction of the third nafs which is mentioned, which okay. is nafs al mutma'inna. Mm -hmm. Now, nafs al mutma'inna is this extremely high level. Mm -hmm. We'll come to that, inshallah. Inshallah. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we come somewhere near mutma'inna. Mm -hmm. 
Inshallah. Many times in the masaib of Imam Al-Hussein alayhi salam mm -hmm. and Muharram, we always hear the line, Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutma'inna, irja'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyya. We, we hear those lines from Surah Al-Fajr, yes. uh, Surah 89 verse 27, and mm -hmm. from 24 onwards. And when we, when we hear those, um, when we hear those lines, naturally as a human being, you want your nafs to come somewhere near. Mm -hmm. The beauty of the selves of Ahl Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You'll never reach there. We'll never reach there. None mm -hmm. of us will reach there. But that should be the goal. But we've also seen the likes of the personalities who were nafs al ammara mm -hmm. Your Yazid bin Muawiyahs, your Farahuns, your Qaruns, your Qabils, mm -hmm. your Nimruds. These were people who just didn't care anymore. One of them <coughs> said, Ana rabbukum al Another said, I'm a lord and the idols mm -hmm. are lords. Another said that I received all this wealth from myself. Never do we want to reach that level. Mm -hmm. We always want to be at a state where we're constantly reflecting. And that reflection and that remembrance of Allah are the methods which help the growth of the nafs mm -hmm. in the same way water and food helps cultivate the growth oh. of the body. Awesome. And you've mentioned um, the three types of nafs. Are there any other types of nafs? I mean, in my research, I came across nafs al mulhimma and uh, nafs al aqila. Um, can you care to elaborate a bit on these? Uh, nafs al mulhimma is the uh, il uh, comes from the word ilham. Okay. And that nafs is the one that has reached a level of purity where it can receive inspiration from God. Oh wow! <coughs> now, prophets of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Receive revelation, known Indeed. in Arabic as wahi. wahi. Yes. There are certain personalities whose nafs is so pure, while they may not receive wahi, they receive ilham. Okay. Ilham is a form of communication from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm -hmm. to the human being. But not in the form of divine revelation. Okay. Now, you look in the Quran, for example, I always remember the story of the mother of Moses. Yes, yes. Nabi Musa alayhi salam's mom, God says, Hold on. How could a mother of a prophet who's not a prophet mm -hmm. receive wahi? She's not receiving yes. wahi. She's being inspired. Her nafs mm -hmm. is at such a level of purity, as you mentioned, the nafs al mulhim. Mm -hmm. It can receive inspiration directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We believe that the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, salam, there's a combination of two things with them. The Ruh al Quds is always with them. Mm -hmm. And they receive ilham from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because their nafs is at that level of purity that can receive the divine communication, mm -hmm. although the wahi ends with the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon mm -hmm. his family. Nafs al aqila is a nafs that has reached a level where it is wise and can impart wisdom. Okay. There are certain nufus, there are certain personalities in the history of man who wisdom flowed from their mouths. For that wisdom to flow doesn't mean I need to have biceps, triceps and a six pack. Okay. Do you notice <laughs> that we, what is it that allows that wisdom to flow? Is it that I look pumped up? Mm -hmm. Not that Islam is not telling me to look after my physical health. But it also tells me, let your identity and personality grow with the remembrance of Allah oh, okay. and the remembrance of Ahlul Bayt. And the more you study the Quran, the more you study the Ahlul Bayt, the more wisdom not only your nafs is able to take, but also your nafs is able to disseminate. So, in nafs al aqila is that nafs which has reached a level of tazkiyah. Okay. Wa nafsi wa ma sawaha. 
by the self and the one who perfected it. فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا He showed it the right way, he showed it the wrong way. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا Successful is the one who purifies himself. وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا Notice in Salat al-Eid, there are two surahs normally you recite. Surah al-Shams, Surah al-A'la. Because both of them are reminding you that on this day of Eid, congratulations for purifying your nafs. Because they have an ayah, Surah al-A'la is the famous ayah, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ تَزَكَّهَ Successful is the one who's purifying himself. Indeed. And Surah Al-Shams, وَنَفْسِ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا So, what you have therefore in النفس العاقلة is the ability now to take wisdom. There are many with علم, few with wisdom. Ascent. I'm afraid we're going to have to have a short break now. So to the viewers, please join us for the second half of the show. We will continue the discussion on the haqq of the self. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to Live in London, where we are discussing the haq of the nafs, the right of the self. If you have any questions that you'd like to direct to Dr. Sayyid Aman Akshwani, please call us on 0203 515 0199, or alternatively, you can send it via WhatsApp, and inshallah, the doctor will be more than happy to discuss and answer your questions. Now, you were saying many have knowledge, but few have wisdom. Um, well, what do you actually mean by that? Uh, is, could you explain a bit more? Wisdom is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I don't think many of us appreciate this gift. Uh, uh -huh. There are many out there who you know, are bookworms, many out there who can read you know, books and articles and, mm -hmm. and give you facts and figures. But to call them wise is not an easy title to give them. Mm -hmm. We have people out there with knowledge, no vision. Yes. People out there with knowledge, little wisdom. Yes. People out there, thank you so much for that. <laughs> did, did you just literally walk across me? Thank you, I love you, I love you, bro. He bought me my tea, I really appreciate it. So, there are people out there with knowledge and, and very little wisdom. Um, and that wisdom is something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically mentions is a gift which has been given to the purer souls. Mm -hmm. um, if you look in the Quran, for example, there are certain prophets of God who either stress on the wisdom that's given to them mm -hmm. or Allah mentions that we gave them wisdom. When Allah says we gave them wisdom, yes. It highlights that hikmah or wisdom is something all of us should seek in our lives. Mm -hmm. um, Christ's first words when he was born, إِنِّي عَبْدُ اللَّهَ تَانِيَ الْكِتَابِ وَجَعَلَنِي نَبِيًّا وَجَعَلَنِي مُبَارَكًا أَيْنَمَا كُنْتُ وَأَوْصَانِ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالزَّكَاةِ مَا دُمْتُ حَيَّا وَبَرًّا بِوَالِدَتِي Christ from the beginning is making clear he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows it in Surah Maryam. I am mm -hmm. the servant of Allah. He has given me the book yes. and made me a prophet. Mm -hmm. From the beginning, God has imparted wisdom to Christ yes. from the cradle. Then you have those who God imparts wisdom to in their youth. Mm -hmm. John the Baptist, وَآتَيْنَاهُ الْحُكْمَ sabiya. We gave mm -hmm. him wisdom while he was a sabi. Okay. Let's say early teens. Mm -hmm. Then you have the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family, highlighting that for the growth of the self of the human being, mm -hmm. recognizing the wisdom from the holy book is as important as reciting the holy book. Mashallah. If you today is the day of Friday. Yes. And you see the verse in the Quran. 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن صورة الجمعة هو الذي بعث في الأميين رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة The Holy Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and his family God says he sent them from among he sent him from amongst the people mm-hmm. one who recites the verses purifies the people mm-hmm. teaches them the book and the wisdom that comes from that book mm-hmm. part of the journey of developing one's soul purifying one's self is to look for the people of wisdom and to benefit from their wisdom and to pray to God for that wisdom Mm-hmm. For nothing will allow you to have a growth in your identity and your personality and face the jihad of the self. Yes. Like having wisdom given to you from your Lord. Awesome. I see many in the Muslim world with knowledge. Mm-hmm. But I've met a couple with wisdom. Mm-hmm. I see many who can quote you verses inside out. Okay. I see many who can give you hadiths. Mm-hmm. If you ask them, what's your vision for okay. Islam for the next 20 years? I haven't discussed it. Nothing. I haven't thought of it. I've seen many who have knowledge of verses of the Holy Quran or traditions of the Holy Prophet about envy. They're the most envious. <laughs> But they know all the verses and the traditions. I've seen many who can tell Mashallah. you about the life of Imam Ali Muhammad alayhi salam. Mashallah. But they are so arrogant in their ways. They're far from the teachings. I've seen many who, for example, will quote you Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. But they're the biggest backstabbers. Mm-hmm. So the difference between knowledge and wisdom. There are people who've studied. Is knowledge enough for a person to have a pure self? Okay. No. Knowledge, wisdom, morality, all of these go hand in hand for the purity of the self. Asan, asan. We do have a caller, Sayyidna. So, sure, sure, go ahead, go ahead. Let's, the let's technical go ahead. team are sure, sure, ready and everything. Assalamu alaikum, your name and where you're calling from? Uh, wa alaikum as uh, My name is Tamba Hussain, I'm calling from London. MashaAllah, Tamba. Your question, please, to the Sayyid. Bring me and my mother to the uh, Ahl al-Bayt alayhi wa salam. God bless you. Uh, Masha'Allah. Masha'Allah. It's God who brought you guys to the Ahl al-Bayt. Uh, we've been here for eight years and we can't thank you enough uh, for bringing us to the Ahl al-Bayt. God bless. Thank uh, you. Uh, my question is, uh, it's a bit off topic, but I just wanted to know is, uh, is the event of Kabbalah like, mentioned in the Quran? And if it is, how? And if it is not, why, uh, why isn't it mentioned in the Quran? Uh, uh, yeah. Thank you very much for your question. Thank you, brother. Zaina, would you care to answer the question? The event of Karbala mentioned in the Quran. I cannot say directly the event of Karbala is mentioned in the Quran. What I mean by that is, I cannot say that when these verses of the Quran were being revealed in Mecca or in Medina, I cannot sit here and say that the Prophet sat down with his companions and said that this verse is revealed about what will happen at Karbala. Mm -hmm. However, did he himself talk about Karbala in his own lifetime with his wife, Um Salama? Yes, the traditions are there. Did he mention Karbala in front of his companions, companions of his narrate? Yes. What he used to say about Imam al-Hussein and how Imam al-Hussein will be killed at Karbala. Are there verses of the Holy Quran? That one of their meanings relates to what took place at Karbala, Mm -hmm. then yes. One may look at the ransom sacrifice of Ismail for the later generations of Abraham. Of course, Imam al Hussein is a descendant of Ismail and Ibrahim. One may look at Ya'ayatuha Nafsul Mutma'inna and which, Mm. who represents the Nafsul Mutma'inna? Yes. Like the Nafs of Imam al Hussein on the plains of Karbala. Ascent. But if you're telling me directly, then no. Directly, I wouldn't say that verse on that day was directly in reference to what would happen 50 odd years later. Awesome. Now you mentioned nafsi mutma'inna. For the viewers, how can one strive to achieve such uh, a level? I mean, w- what sort of uh, contemplation, what sort of exercises 
what sort of strength would be required to go towards such a direction, such a goal? Well, reflect on, on those personalities who were at Mutmainna and higher. What did they practice mm -hmm. that meant that God gave them the blessing of having that personality yes. that brought the nafs and the ruh in unison with one another? I think one of the keys which I hope I can work on better in my life and all of us can is the night prayer. Salat al layl Namaz al Not No act, I think, <coughs> builds the connection between ourselves and the divine breath. Mm -hmm. Like standing in the middle of the night when everybody else is asleep. Yes. And talking to the Lord. Not only is it an expiation for our sins of the day, mm -hmm. but it certainly is the zina of the hereafter, the adornment of the hereafter. You look at the tradition, Salat al is mentioned very highly in terms of the light that is given mm -hmm. to the self of the human being who stands up in the middle of the night to talk to their Lord. Mm -hmm. Fasting is an act, definitely, which helps a person discipline the nafs, purify the nafs. In Islam, you have, for example, Mondays and Thursdays are mentioned as days which a person should fast, fast. even outside yes. of Ramadan. Yes. Sunnah or the 13th, 14th and 15th of every month, for yes. example. The constant remembrance of God and the saints of God on earth mm -hmm. is an act that helps a person grow into moving from lawama to mm -hmm. mutma'inna. Majalis al Hussein alayhi salam are one of the greatest treasures that you could have as a human being. Number one, you're reflecting on the nafs al mutma'inna. Yes. Number two, you're also learning the lessons. From the life of the Ahlul Bayt salam, what supplications to recite, how to deal with one's parents, how to be charitable. Mm -hmm. All of these help build your personality. And what many of us don't realize is the nafs that we end up with in this world is really what our nafs is in Barzakh. Okay. If you want to know that in Barzakh, Barzakh, your body is not there anymore. Yes. Your body is on six feet under the ground. Indeed. What goes there? The oh. nafs that you've developed in this world. Is it a soft nafs? Mm -hmm. Meaning, is it one that's humble, generous, tolerant? Take that. The mirror image of it is barzakh. Mm. Your nafs in barzakh. Yes, the one that's here that is abrasive, mm -hmm. arrogant, disrespectful. Take that and just move it towards barzakh. Mm -hmm. So... Acts such as Salat al-Layl, acts such yes. as fasting, acts such as <coughs> being a servant to the creation, in turn, you become a servant to the Creator. Mm -hmm. And also, one act in Islam that is hardly ever discussed, and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family, would always say, an hour of it is greater than 70 years of worship, and that is reflection. reflection. You know, in the lives that we live in this world, it's so fast. Wake up, mm -hmm. get up, run, quick, do this, get Especially back. Especially life run. in London, the rat race that we live here is rat race, ridiculous. And ridiculous. And we as human beings begun as creations who are living in the middle of vast fields, greenery, yes. water, mountains <laughs> very, and hills. Yes, very natural. And now we live in a world where you don't, when you see some greenery or you see some water in a beach somewhere, have you noticed how much you feel that peace? Wow. Yeah. That blue. It's so nice. Oh, look at the green. Look at the trees. You smell you the smell fresh, fresh air. air. Yes. And I think sometimes the nafs of the human being, its vehicle is the body and it's so close to each other that even when you die, that nafs is still circling wow. the, the grave. It needs that peacefulness to grow. You know, your body requires certain hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some people may say I can live on three hours of sleep a day, a night. Some may <laughs> say I can live on four hours. Some of our ulama mm -hmm. mentioned how they didn't sleep much. Yes. But let's say a human being is seven, eight hours, they feel so average, yeah. Same way your body requires rest mm -hmm. 
-hmm. requires things which help it grow. Likewise, your nafs requires that peacefulness, that serenity as well. So all of these are major factors. So would you say that it's a, a linear movement between Amara and Luwa? No. It can, it can go no. back, forth, up in... You can have someone... Malcolm X was in a world of Amara. Okay. Moved to Lawama and skipped it quite quickly until he reached a level of such peace and serenity with his Lord. Mm -hmm. It was in prisons. Yes. And look where he reached at the end, mm -hmm. where Hajj was. Now, some will say his journey was Amara, Lawama, Mutmainna. But I don't think that has to be the equation always. Very hard to see Mutmainna fall to Ammara. Mm -hmm. Although it's debatable where people like Bal'am bin Ba'ura, the scholar of the children of Israel, where he fell, or where, for example, Qarun fell from. Mm -hmm. They seem to be people who are very well versed in the, okay. in the Old yes. Testament, but they fall completely. But Ammara to Mutmainna, I don't think you have to go through Lawama. Okay. But there must be some sort of reflection that suddenly brings it. Because sometimes you hear the stories of people who will tell you, I wasn't religious at all. One yeah. day, car crash, something happened. Mm -hmm. One day, my friend died. One day, this happened. And that made me change my life completely. Mm -hmm. So, I wouldn't say linear is always the equation, but probably in most cases. Um, a personal question for myself is, how do people who are probably raised in the Hawza or people who are come from a religious background fall to Amara? Yeah, I mean, they just have total disregard, maybe lost faith. How, how does this actually happen? Was there no Yaqeen in the first place? Was there no... There are people who fell from a level of grace. There are those who were brought up in a world of religion and left it. Mm -hmm. And there are those who are tempted by you know, the, the, pleasures, and treasures the, of the pleasures of what surrounds them. Mm -hmm. Umar bin Sa'ad, his dad is a companion of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yet at the end, he doesn't mind ordering the beheading of Imam Hussein. Mm -hmm. His dad was a companion, Sa'ad bin Abi Waqqas. And yet he doesn't mind. Kill Hussein bin Ali. And trample, orders the horses to trample on the chest of Imam Hussein. Why? Because Yazid says to him that I'm promising you a piece of Iran by the name of Ray. Mm -hmm. And yet, subhanAllah, the same army, Hurb and Yazid al-Riyahi, could have easily been tempted and decides no. So, fame can get to you, wealth can get to you, popularity can get to you. I guarantee you there are people out there who are famous and know that the path of the Ahlul Bayt is the path that they should be taking, but their fame doesn't allow them to publicly admit. Oh, wow. I guarantee you. Mm -hmm. Some, their friends and family, they'll lose all of them if they admit. Okay. Some, their fame. Mm -hmm. that how can I admit this? What will happen to me? People will say you're a seller, you're this. Mm. People will say you're a trade, and they won't. So, there are people out there on Lawama, instead of taking that jump, Mm -hmm. Hurbin Yazid Riyah is on Lawama and Karbala is thinking, mm -hmm. what's going on? Yes. What am I doing? Mm -hmm. These guys are going to kill the grandson of the man who they praise yes. and pray? Mm -hmm. Lawama too, at the end, Inni an al hur wa ma'wa al dhayf, adhribukum fi a'naqikum bis saif, an khayri man halla bilad al khayf, adhribukum wala ara man khayf. You know, uh, moving to a level where I am hur and you know, I'm welcoming to my guests. I'll strike you on your necks with the swords, mm -hmm. a strike on the greatest of personalities, uh, and I don't fear when I'm striking. You look at that level of mm -hmm. intimate. None. Mm -hmm. And then you have Omar bin Sa'ad. Lawam thinking this falls into Ammara and the abyss mm -hmm. of the rest. Yeah. In the Quran, they're saying that we read so many times that every nafs will taste death. Mm. But we've established that nafs is more <coughs> of a conscience. It's not really a material. It doesn't really eat when it's alive or when it's dead. So how, what, what, what is the meaning of this ayah? What's, what's the philosophy behind this? 
Yeah, it's interesting because we always hear it in the majalis, this mm-hmm. ayat. Every nafs will taste death. And then you'll think, hold on. When does it taste death? Yes. When it dies, that means it hasn't tasted death. Mm-hmm. We can't. When it's alive, well, it's alive. Then. Yeah. It tastes the separation of the body and the ruh. Okay. What's death? It's a transition from the... <laughs> separation of? Body and ruh. And the? Ruh. ruh. Someone dies, what happens? Wow. A separation now. Yes. Ruh, eternal, body, dead. Mm-hmm. The nafs tastes it. Okay. So it's not the nafs that's dying. Uh-huh. It tastes the Experience. separation uh-huh. okay. of the ruh and the jism. Mm-hmm. And I know many people always ask me this question. Now why does Allah say every nafs will taste death, but the nafs remains alive? So... And that is the nafs tasting the separation between the ruh and the body. Yeah. So in terms of this journey that we're discussing, uh, the journey of the, the nafs, um, before I finish my question, we're going to go to a caller on the sure. line. So I do apologize. Uh, caller, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Your name and where you're calling from? Wa alaikum assalam. My name is Katim. I'm calling from Glasgow, Scotland. Oh, great. Lovely. Nice to have you. Your uh, question, please, to the Sayyid. Yes, um, my question for Dr. Nukshwani, whom I must say I certainly do respect a lot. And before I just pose my question, I'd like to say that he has had a great influence in my upbringing and the upbringing of my counterparts here in Glasgow and in the Shia community. Now I'd like to just pose pose my question. My question is on the topic of... um, how Dr. Nakshwani was talking about uh, thoughts and how we are meant to go deep within and think at a deeper level. Um, I would like to hear Dr. Nakshwani's thoughts um, on the aspect of um, certain Western ideologies such as the law of attraction, which states that thoughts become things and that our inner life creates our outer life. Could he share his thoughts on this, please? Thank you. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you. Do you understand the question, Doctor? Sure. I, you know, I think we, would, we, we heard it sufficiently, I think, um, mm-hmm. uh, although there was a technical issue in the middle. But from what I gather is that the brother from Glasgow was saying that sometimes your inner thoughts become yes. uh, your states. And I think in Islam, God doesn't punish a person for their thoughts. You know, the, of the faculties of the soul is al-quwa al-wahmiya, the power of imagination. You can imagine absolutely anything you want. God's not going to punish you for what mm-hmm. you think. Acting on these will prove where yourself is really at. I see. I said this word. In Islam... Put- Having a good thought gets a reward. Acting mm. upon it, multiply by ten. ten. Having a bad thought, no sin. Mm-hmm. Acting upon it, you get one sin. If a person says, what I think becomes my state, no, we as human beings, of the key areas that are discussed in Tezkiyat and Nafs and Jihad and Nafs, is willpower. I don't just as a human being, anything I think, that means that that's me. No, I've got willpower. Mm -hmm. Just because I want, I've thought of something, doesn't mean I have to act upon that thought. I have a a moral code of conduct where my barometer is set by my Lord. I have the example of the saints. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of Iman, faith. You know, there are times where someone may have suicidal thoughts. Mm -hmm. What is it that holds them from committing suicide? Except faith. Mm -hmm. There are many out there who have committed suicide because they live in a generation sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes, you're living in a generation at a time where don't believe in no God, no afterlife, no Mm -hmm. day of accountability, no day where you will get what you deserve. So they think that everything ends with this world. Their their worldview is purely materialistic, Mm -hmm. purely in the world of the physical, rather than a world which recognizes the metaphysical. And Mm -hmm. and so, no faith, I'll commit suicide. If 
I now have a suicidal thought, those who are telling me that just because I think something that could actually become my... No. I have a suicidal thought. Things aren't going too well. But hold on a minute. Was there a day like the 10th of Muharram? Mm -hmm. Was there a journey like Karbala to Kufa to Shah? Yes. What I'm going through, is it really that bad? It's nothing. Have prophets of Allah gone through worse than me? Definitely. That's where Iman comes. Mm -hmm. and that's the beauty of Iman. Having faith ensures that certain thoughts aren't just suddenly becoming states and acted upon. But rather I'm like, okay, these thoughts are there. I say things like, A'udhu Billah Minash Shaitan Rajeem. I go and do ablution, purify mm -hmm. myself. I go on ziyara, key for the growth of the self of the human. And the purification of the self of the human is the visitation of the graves Ascent. of those who have not only been the most wonderful spirits, mm -hmm. but have the most wonderful spirits surrounding their grave. Assalamu alaikum ya Aba Abdullah. Wa'alal. What's the next line in the ziyara? Salamu alaikum ya Aba Abdullah. Wa'alal. Hallati. Salams on Aba Abdullah. Mm -hmm. And on the spirits that surround mm -hmm. the grave of Aba Abdullah. Wa'ala al arwah al lati hallat bi finaik. Wa anakat bi rahli. Alaikum minni jamia. Here, salam to Aba Abdullah. But also a recognition of the metaphysical, the spirits, the wonderful spirits that surround the grave of Imam al Hussein. Mm -hmm. So, what's fundamental for all of us in helping to cultivate our personalities, ourselves, is to ensure that we don't fall in this trap where think something must be natural, think something must act upon it, think something must taste it, think something must enjoy it. No. Mm -hmm. Willpower, discipline, Ascent. and there's a path that's been laid out by God's mm. saints on earth. Ascent. On top of that, in terms of the discipline, the self-purification, the, the witnessing of the self and improving the self, how important is it that we do this communally, as a community, uh, maybe as, as, a, as a group supporting one another and as a whole community to purify itself for the benefit and the health of society? Uh, how important is it that we do we go forward with that notion. I think if you're looking for example, one of the most famous verses in the Holy Quran, Allah will not change a group of people mm -hmm. until they change themselves. from themselves. Correct? Right. Correct. Allah will not change a group. Mm -hmm. Allah, Allah will not change the situation of a, a people until they change from themselves. And what's this saying to us? That sometimes when you're looking around you in your world and you're seeing certain issues, certain trials, reflect on yourself. Work mm -hmm. on changing it. Yes. Then you'll see Allah SWT will say, you take a couple steps to me, I'll take 10 steps back towards you. So collectively, we should all seek to encourage each other mm -hmm. to perform those acts which help cultivate the growth of ourselves. That's it. On top of um, performing those acts, do you have any hadith or Quranic ayahs or any exercises that can, would help uh, someone uh, purify themselves? But before we go to that, <laughs> we have a caller on the sure, line go again. Ahead. Go ahead. Call us. Salaamu Alaikum. Your name and where you're calling from? Salaamu Alaikum. My name is Hussain Jawad and I am from Hull. MashaAllah Hussain. Your question for the Sayyid, please. Uh, my question is, where do the diseases of the heart originate from? Ascent. Very good question. Thank you. Saying that the diseases of the heart, I think he probably talks, uh, he's been jealousy, uh, <coughs> backbiting, envy. Where do but, these originate from? How do they get into our hearts? I, I think... In many cases, a lack of uh, faith and understanding of the Lord. Okay. A Lord. How, how, why would you be jealous of somebody when your Lord is ready to give you what they have and more? Mm -hmm. Many times in the Quran, God will say to the creation, "Ma gharraka bi Rabbika al karim." Mm -hmm. What makes you doubt your generous Lord? Which of your Lord's signs do you belie? Which of your Lord's signs do you deny? deny? You, the human being, when you're, for example, have a disease of the heart like envy, mm -hmm. that person shows a lack of iman. Mm -hmm. The mu'min envies but does not envy. That's the problem mm -hmm. with English translation. 
Now, how do I translate it properly? Ghibta is when I see you driving a Ferrari. Mm. And I'm like, MashaAllah, Mohsin's 488 looks amazing. I don't know what that is. <laughs> a pretend you know what it is. May Allah bless us and the viewers with a 488. Inshallah. Ghibta. You see, in English, envy normally has one connotation, yeah. negative. Yeah. In Arabic, you have a positive envy, negative envy. Ghibta is positive envy. I look at your 488, I'm like, MashaAllah, that's a beautiful car. Inshallah, God gives him more mm -hmm. and God gives me one day as well. Inshallah. Hasad mm -hmm. is when I'm like, why does he always get a 488? Okay. Why can't I ever get cars like that? Why does that guy always have the best cars? Mm -hmm. Why does that guy have the best house? Why does that guy always have the best clothes? Why does that guy have the best whatever, whatever? Mm -hmm. So what do I then do? I wish God removes it from his life. Oof. I wish something happens. Mm -hmm. That disease is worse than your physical diseases. Mm -hmm. That disease, Imam Ali ibn Talib Ali Islam says, envy devours faith mm -hmm. like fire devours wood. Wow. You see how fire destroys wood? Yes. Envy can destroy Iman. Mm -hmm. A mu'min, one who knows Allah is Ar Razak, Allah is Jawad, Allah is Kareem, will turn around and say, Why should I be envious of anyone? I just ask God, God will give me. Mm -hmm. A mu'min will turn around and say, If that person's a good human being, why am I thinking bad on that person? Why am I hating? Mm -hmm. We got so many haters in some of our communities. It's unreal. I remember once saying in a lecture, why are you being a hater? And it went around everywhere. I said, <laughs> I said, why are you being a hater? Why are you being a hater? And truly some people, haters on a different league. Wow. And those same people who are the haters are telling you about how to talk about Ahlul Bayt, how do you quote from Ahlul Bayt, give you a hadith about Ahlul Bayt. But they're haters on a different league. That person who's trying to talk about religion, the moment you see them hating on this, hating on that, you know that that person is a disease. Mm -hmm. Quote as much as you want. The haters is unreal. And that hater, lack of understanding of God, the attributes of God, that's where this disease comes from. Mm -hmm. If a person reflected on the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that person would turn around and say, you know what? God's so kind to his creation. I'm not going to think bad of his creation in that way. On the contrary, I'm going to pray for his creation as well as pray for myself. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. With purifying oneself, do you know any, well, can you advise us or direct <coughs> us towards any Quranic ayahs or hadith or any sort of uh, practices that, that you know, talk about the methods of purifying oneself? What, what should we indulge in to, to uh, help purify the self and remove such diseases as you were talking about? I think, about I, think I touched on them earlier and there, mm. are, there are some, you know, good works. You know, the, gra the great scholar Al-Amini has mm -hmm. a, a brilliant book, which is in English. It's available called Self Building. Okay. Um, then you have the great scholar by the name of uh, Mujtama Musawilari who has a book okay. called Ethics and Spiritual Growth, mm -hmm. which I think is another, these are books full of traditions. I think um, where there are traditions of Ahlul Bayt, and this is the key line. Ahlul Bayt have given us so many traditions about how you cultivate the growth of your nafs, purify your soul, that you don't need to go anywhere else. Mm -hmm. The 14 ma'asul means traditions. If a person was to reflect upon them, I think these are great works which a person can look at. Um, which take ayahs such as Allah bi dhikrillah tatma'in al qulub take ayahs such as, for example, qad aflaha man zakkaha, qad aflaha man tazakka, mm -hmm. and they begin to discuss these verses of the Holy Quran. Asan, yeah. asan. Doctor, we're coming towards the end of our show now. So the final question I have for you is, um, what's your favorite example of those who mastered their self and defeated death? Well, father-son combination. Imam Ali ibn Talib on the night of Hijrah mm -hmm. 
There are those who sell their souls for the pleasure of God. Okay. When he slept in the bed of the Holy Prophet on the night of Hijrah, he sold mm -hmm. his soul for the pleasure of God. If it means that I get killed so that the Prophet Muhammad remains alive. Yes. And his son, Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, oh, by the Euphrates, yes. all his last words before he died is his nafs. Mm -hmm. yes. Ya nafs min ba'd al Hussein huni. لا أرهب الموت ذا الموت زقا حتى أعرف المصاليت لقا نفسي لنفس المصطفى. You have for example later on يا نفس لا تخشى من الكفار وبشر برحمة الجبار مع النبي السيد المختار. So he keeps on he keeps on showing that his minor jihad his major minor jihad in Karbala was going on the battlefield. His major jihad was coming to the forat and saying no, I will never drink this water while my brother. Drinks the syrup of death. Those are the two most wonderful moments for me when it came to mastering the nafs and reaching mutmain. Final thought for the viewers: anything? What you would like them to take away from this discussion? Well, I'm no one. I'm, I'm re really, I'm no one to talk about how to reach the level of mutmain mm -hmm. or to have mastered one's nafs. But mm -hmm. reflection on the words of the Quran and the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salam, for if anyone could teach you how to. Have that unison between the ruh and the nafs. And if anyone can show you how to have the tranquil soul that can, you know, overcome all the lowest desires, look no further than the Ahlul Bayt. Ah, sent, ah, sent. Doctor, thank you very much for tonight's discussion. My pleasure. Thank you. Excellent. To the viewers, inshallah, we'll be having a program on Monday. We will continue the discussions of the, right, the Treaty of Rights. And we'll be looking at the third right, which is the right of the tongue, inshallah. Until then, stay safe. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.